Coming up, Logan Seavey will get more winged sprint car chances. The Outlaws mess with wicker bills. More on Chris Madden and Devin Borden. Plus, the Hunt the Front series starts announcing some full-timers. Let's go. It's Tuesday, January 16th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. Fresh off his second Chili Bowl win in a row, it sounds like Logan Seavey will be getting some more uh, winged 410 sprint car starts later this year. In this week's edition of Area Auto Racing News, car owner Kevin Swindell said, quote, I only ran eight or ten times last year with a lot of guys in and out of the car. This year, we'll probably take Logan to race. All of the schedules are available now. We're going to look at them all and see, unquote. In 2023, the Swindell Speed Lab 39 started the year with Justin Sanders in the seat competing with High Limit, and their big moment of the year really came when Hunter Schoenberg made the main event at the Knoxville Nationals. A popped motor, though, and some health issues for Kevin kept the team on the shelf for much of the rest of the season. Kevin and Jordan Swindell have also been busy building their Victory Fuel beverage business as well, which was featured on the Chili Bowl winning midget each of the past two years and the Sprint car. Kevin also talked about a recent move to Arkansas, which puts them closer to some uh, Midwest areas like Knoxville. CV's victory in Tulsa in 2023 kicked off what is probably one of the great non-wing sprint, uh, sprint car midget seasons to date. He followed that Chili Bowl win with three Silver Crown victories en route to that championship. He had eight USAC National Midget wins and a dominating title run there, plus two USAC Sprint Car victories and a sweep of the non-wing portion of the Four Crown at Eldora. With a wing on, he actually had a win at Trophy Cup, but that was taken away because of being light at the scales. We'll leave that story for another day. Uh, and a top 10 with high limit at Kokomo. Watching what Tyler Courtney has done the last few years, transitioning from non-wing to wing very successfully, I don't see any reason why CV couldn't do much the same. We're kind of watching Chris Windham on a similar trajectory as well. Hopefully, CV will continue to get some more chances with the wing on because I do think he could be successful on that side. Uh, in some sprint car uh, rules news that's dropped in recent days, the World of Outlaws announced they are going to try a different wing wicker bill setup for races in 2024. If you don't know what a wicker bill is, picture the sprint car wing in the very rear edge of the flat part of the wing. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see a photo on the screen. Look where the red arrows are. That, uh, that line across the back of the wing is basically what we're talking about when we talk about wicker bills. Teams are allowed to place what is effectively a piece of metal there to add additional downforce. The Outlaw Rulebook allows for a maximum 2-inch wicker bill at the moment, but after working with the industry, they're going to test a maximum 1-inch wicker bill, so they're going to take an inch off. The Outlaw release says they plan on testing this change at several track types and evaluate feedback before making a rule change. And the first of these tests in 2024 will take place during the Sprint Car Nights of Dirt Car Nationals at Volusia. The hope is that the reduction of the wicker will allow for less dirty air behind the cars and make it easier for cars to follow one another. And if they can follow closer and be less hooked up, that will hopefully lead to better racing, more passing, things like that. This idea of dirty air and closer racing has been pervasive across world motorsports for the last several years. We've seen both Formula One and NASCAR work with things like more ground effect aerodynamics to try and aid in the cars not being so affected by the wake of the car in front. That aerodynamic wake means less downforce on the trailing car and especially on the front uh, of that trailing car. L less downforce means less grip, so again, harder to pass. Countless millions of dollars have been spent by these sanctioning bodies on research and development, uh, and it's a problem they have yet to really completely solve. There have been improvements, uh, but there's still a lot of work to do. In the arena of sprint car racing, it sounds like opinions are mixed on if this will actually make a real difference or not, but some big players appreciate that the effort is being made. Jeremy Elliott at SprintCarUnlimited.com wrote a story this week with reactions from several drivers, including David Gravel and Donnie Schatz. Go check that out if you're curious to see what they had to say. It'll be something to watch Evolution in a few weeks, as that's a big, fast racetrack, and Arrow is important there. So maybe if it works at Volusia, it's a good sign that it could work other places as well. I've got a couple of updates on stories we talked about yesterday as well. First with Chris Madden. We dove into his status for 2024 uh, yesterday with All Signs and his website, pointing towards a full-time return to Outlaw competition. And just hours after my daily show went live, Madden was confirmed by the World of Outlaws Lay Model Series as returning for 2024. So he is now officially the 18th full-time member of the season. A lot of the late model teams will be on track tomorrow night at Volusia for open practice. That is on Wednesday. Uh, and then the uh, Sunshine Nationals begin this weekend on Thursday. They're going to run Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. 
Also, we've got more on Devin Borden's upcoming season with the newly renamed Stamen Motorsports. They didn't share a complete schedule yesterday, but the team did say they will travel more this season and not run for points anywhere. Borden was the 2023 track champion at Port Royal, but we're not, uh, he will not pursue a title defense there. Borden and the 23 appeared 74 times last season in 410 Sprint Car Competition, but outside of a couple of trips to Bridgeport and the PA Speed Week show at Hagerstown, which I kind of feel like don't count that much, uh, the only time the team really left Central Pennsylvania was the year-end run south to Charlotte for World Finals. In 2024, they say they will hit the major sprint car races and go way out west to Skagit for their two big weekends, Super Dirt Cup in June and the Skagit Nationals in August. What the major sprint car races means at this point, I'm not sure. I would assume Kings Royal, Knoxville Nationals, some of the big outlaw shows, big high limit shows. Uh, And those trips out to Skagit will be uh, home trips for Borden, who's actually from the Pacific Northwest, but has kind of made his name for himself uh, racing in Pennsylvania. And I'll be curious to see how the central PA sprint car scene shapes up this season. You're going to have less Brent Marks, less Justin Peck because of their full-time high limit campaigns. Anthony Macri will probably be out and about a lot as well. And now Devin Borden traveling more. So that's four pretty big names that have uh, won a lot of races uh, in central Pennsylvania. You'll still have Freddie Raymer and Danny Dietrich, Lance DeWeese, Chase Deeds. A lot of guys will continue to race there. But those top guys getting out and traveling more will open things up. It's going to create opportunities for some other drivers to step up and run well, win some races, win some championships. But does some of that star power missing hurt the tracks, hurt attendance? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I know a lot of people out there have uh, some pretty strong opinions about how all of this is going. Uh, Over to our friends at Hunt the Front. They're still about two months away uh, here from the start of their Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series season. Uh, They're going to get started in March at Talladega, I believe March 15th. Uh, They are starting, though, to release their full timers for the 2024 season. They're going way bigger this year. They're going to have 25 races on their schedule. They're going to pay $50,000 to the champion. And a lot of races on their schedule pay $10,000 to win or more. We already knew that Sam Seawright will join their tour this season, and yesterday they announced that Florida driver Clay Harris has signed on. Harris had eight wins a year ago across crate lane models and modifieds and made a handful of super late model appearances as well, uh, including seven with Hunt the Front sanctioned races. I'm assuming that Hunt the Front's Joseph Joyner will also chase the championship again this season, so the addition of Harris brings them to three at the moment. Josh Putnam was the series champion a year ago. He topped uh, Joyner and Will Harrington in the final weekend of the season. That one thing was that that championship was tight all the way to the end. I really didn't get decided until that final night. Uh, We'll see who else here throws their hat in with the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series in the coming weeks. Like I said, still a couple of months to go before their season starts. Uh, Before we close out today, keep an eye on the Dirt Tracker YouTube channel this evening. Late last week, I teased a new video series coming featuring one of the top sprint car drivers in the game right now. And the first in that series drops later today. I'm excited for you guys to see it and for this new content partnership. Lots of really fun stuff coming there and uh, still more in the works uh, outside of our uh, regular scheduled programming as well. So a lot of fun stuff coming from Dirt Tracker. So stay tuned for all of that. Uh, That's it for the daily show today. Make sure to hit the streaming schedule over at dirttracker.com and sign up for our free email newsletter the slider i've got a new piece coming there as well hope you guys have a great tuesday out there we'll see you right back here tomorrow 